Hey everyone, it's Nadia from Leah Dia Designs and I'm back with another tutorial. Okay, so <laughs> before we get started, I wanted to quickly say this just because um, this video might seem a little bit out of sorts. But um, and the reason for that is is because I recorded pretty much the entire video um, and then I realized about halfway through that my camera wasn't focusing or was doing some weird thing where it was just kind of like bouncing, like it was focusing and then unfocusing and focusing and unfocusing. And basically the first half of my video, I don't even know if any of it's usable. So, um, oh, so I'm going to redo the intro here. It's not exactly the way it was, um, originally, but I'll walk us through kind of the, what we're thinking about doing today. And, um, there'll still be some bits and pieces in the video, probably in the time lapses more than anything else that do have some of that blurriness. Um, but I'm going to try to cut out as much of it as I can. And hopefully the parts that I can salvage in terms of the tutorial part, um, hopefully they're not blurry, but if you do find some sections that get a little blurry, this, that's the reason why. So I hope you guys forgive me. I just, <laughs> I don't know what was going on with my camera. It was acting very strange, but Anyway, so I just want to let you guys know that. So I am um, recording this intro after the fact. So the pieces have already been made and um, yeah. So let's talk about what we're doing today. So what I'm gonna be making is I wanted to uh, test an idea that I had about uh, making fluid art um, posters or pieces um, without actually using alcohol inks and um, there are a lot of, I mean, alcohol ink art is beautiful, amazing, gorgeous. And of course, um, you know, there are many artists out there that are doing them and they are fantastic. And obviously anything that I do here today is not going to give the exact same effect as what an original alcohol art, um, alcohol ink art piece is going to give you. But, um, I'm, I'm not one of the artists that have learned that medium yet. And um, not saying that I couldn't learn it. It's just more of, it hasn't really been on my radar of things that I want to, you know, uh, invest my time in right now. It's more of maybe in the future. Um, it's just alcohol, alcohol inks aren't one of the mediums that I'm currently working with. So, but I do like the effects. And I was thinking, well, uh, maybe there's a way we can kind of get a similar look for those of you who are probably in a similar situation to me that either you just haven't learned alcohol inks or um, you don't you're not sure if you'll be able to and you kind of want to get a similar type of look so that's what i'm trying to achieve today and of course we're going to do our little extras to it just because this is a leah dia designs video <laughs> so um obviously we're going to add our little extras but um, to get started, so the first thing I want to show you is I'm using these really cute little uh, molds. And these were sent to me by um, Echo Art Solutions. And um, they're super cute. And I just thought they were perfect for um, for our samples. I mean, they could be used as like little shot glass coasters or something like that, or even ornaments or anything small that you kind of you want to have uh, something made for. But uh, for today, I'm going to use them for my little sample coasters. And uh, I'm also going to be using these really pretty uh, scrapbook paper pieces. And they come in a set. I'll show you that. So this is the set that I just got off Amazon. And if you want to know the link for it, just check in the description below this video. And I have links for pretty much everything um, that I use in terms of like brands and products and things like that just check down there and if I have product codes you'll get those as well so they're all down there check that out so anyway so this is the package and these are little six by six inch um individual individual sheets of paper scrapbook paper you can see here blank on the back and um and obviously these are photographs of actual alcohol ink art so we are going to get similar look just by using these. So there's a whole bunch here, some beautiful colors. Just look how pretty that is. So we're gonna pick a few and we're going to uh, to work with them. And before I, um, again, because I had to redo the part, this beginning part of the video, um, I don't have the resin already set into these coasters. Um, so what I had done is I had poured uh, probably about a third or half of the coaster 
uh, sorry, of the mold filled with resin. And I just use white pearl resin. Like you could use any color that you want. I was just using white pearl because I figured it would just be, you know, a nice base. But if you wanted to use darker colors or whatever, even clear, you probably just could do that. So about halfway filled these molds with just um, white resin and then I let that cure. And that was our base for this piece. So, all right. So with all that being said, I'm hoping um, from here, the next clip is going to uh, work out in terms of the process. So in any case, um, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is, um, like I said, we already have our resin cured in the little mold. So the first thing we need to do is make a template because we're gonna need to be able to cut out um, our little sheets of paper here. So, so what I did is I have already created this template and it's just on a piece of plastic acetate or um, really any type of plastic that's sturdy enough to kind of hold its shape. So I already created that one, but just to show you how I did it, um, I've shown it in some of my previous uh, tutorials, but if you want to see it again, for those of you who might be new. So I just, um, I already cut this piece down to approximately the size that I need. And then what I do is I need to measure, I have my Sharpie and I need to measure the inside. So we need to measure this part on the inside, not the outside edge, the inside edge, because that's where the, you know, we need to cut our piece to fit into. So we take that. And for this one, because there's straight edges on it, I actually only marked the corners like this because, um, I mean, my hand, my, I can draw lines pretty straight, but it's still better to, especially in something like this, to uh, use a straight edge. So, so I just mark the corners so like so, and then, um, I have, <laughs> I didn't have a ruler with me. It went, it grew legs and walked away. So I just have a piece of card and, uh, and then you just line them up. And you want to go a little bit, you want to make sure that your lines are a little bit on the inside of your marking because you do want this template to, you're going to be tracing around it. So our, the tracing will be a little bit larger. So we're going to go a little bit on the inside of our lines here. Like so, and so. And so, all right, so like that. And then what we would do is just cut that out and then that would give us um, a piece like this here. So if I'll take that other way. And then you can see that this fits inside of our square, oh, sorry, our hexagon. So now we can know that this will fit um, when we use it as a template. Um, the first thing we'll do is we're gonna take our template. The cool thing about it is that you can put this pretty much anywhere on this paper and then it's going to give you a unique piece. So you could do a set of four, like how I have four here and do four sections on just this one piece of paper. And then you're going to have a really unique set because each one is going to be slightly different and it's going to look really cool. So um, the section I want to use on this particular one is going to be right here just because we have you know, a lot of interesting things going on. And that's the cool thing again with alcohol ink is that you're getting so many different shades and hues of the one color. So, um, you know, we're getting a bit of the peach and the orange in here as well as the, we have obviously the gold and then we have the purples. So um, the variations in the colors is just what's so interesting. And that's created from um, when the alcohol ink overlaps each other and, uh, you know, some areas are lighter, some areas are darker. So in any case, so I have that. And then oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pencil. I mean, you could use a pen, but you can take, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm just going to outline it. And you want to be as careful as you can when outlining. And we're going to need to cut on the inside of this outline, like so. Oh, did I get that last line in there? Let's see it. 
probably should have used my marker. You guys could have seen it better. But um, so here we go. Let's see my outline. And then I'm just going to cut it out really quick. And again, we need to cut on the inside of the line. Alright, so there we go. We have our first piece and like that. And then we should be able to take that and put it straight in our mold. There we go. And I want it to kind of do like that. <laughs> but anyways, like anyway, any way that you want to turn it, it's gonna look really neat. So, so there we go. So we have one done. And I'm going to go ahead and do the others in a quick time lapse and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so we're back and um, we have all of our uh, little papers cut out now and I think they look really cute. Like I said, it's just a matter of you pick kind of the area that um, looks interesting to you and you work with that. Um, like I said, and, and if you obviously want to maximize the paper, then you would use four sections. But I was trying to find interesting uh, sections because I want to show you specific things that I want to do for each one of them and so I kind of picked each section to that's going to showcase it the best okay so what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you this one first and we're going to um, glue this down into our mold um, and we're going to be using my trusty uh, gloss varnish right here just gonna grab a paintbrush right back okay so here we go and I'm just going to put some in my cup and all we need to do and the reason I also test I saw I don't know if you saw on the time lapse I tested to make sure each one of these are fitting properly into the mold because it's important that um, they fit you don't want to get into this gluing stage and then they don't fit <laughs> the way you want so um, so I'm just gonna do this so and then we'll just stick it right in the mold right on the resin so so there we go and um for in terms of the edges if your paper isn't perfectly uh, straight or aligned or maybe it's a little bit on the smaller side it's okay um because for i mean for me and i think um for many of you, if you're going to be trying this, uh, give yourself some grace with that. Just because, especially once we're done and we add our top coats and everything's done, you can uh, paint the edges and as, and a little bit along the top edge as well. So this will hide any of those type of imperfections. So don't stress yourself out too much about that. Okay, so we're going to put that in like so. And we'll leave that one to kind of start to dry a bit. I'm not worrying right now about adding more gloss varnish to the top. Um, I'll consider that once we're done all of them. But um, I know for my resin, I don't actually need to do it just because um, my resin's fast curing. So I find that I don't really need to do that with any of the papers or washi tape or um, any of the other type of, you know, even the fabrics and things that I use. I tend not to not to need to put the gloss varnish on it but um, if your resin is a more slower slower curing resin or if you've noticed in the past that you had issues with maybe if you tried putting paper or a photograph or something in resin and you did have an issue um, then you could just you know take the same gloss varnish and seal the top 
and that's going to seal that in for you so you won't have to worry about that as well so just know that is an option if you want to do it i may not do it um but that doesn't mean it can't be done all right okay so i'm going to go into another quick time lapse we'll get the rest of these glued in and i'll be right back Okay, so we're done with that. So we'll move that aside. Um, and I, if I need to clean my brush, I just use a bit of isopropyl alcohol. And um, you can have a cup for it. I just, I just usually put a, just put a few drops on my paper towel. And this way, <laughs> pencil wants in on the fun. Um, I just go like this and just literally like brush it all off and then it's usually good as new there we go all done okay so um we will be coming back and using another brush later but probably the smaller one so all right so here we go so we have all of our papers now pasted down you just want to make sure they're pressed nice and flat you don't want to get any air bubbles in there if you can help it this one has a bit of a bump, Oops. but you want to be careful too at this stage that you're not rubbing too hard to your paper because it is softer at the moment because the gloss varnish is on the back. And if you rub too hard, um, you might actually rip the paper. So we want to be firm, but <laughs> gentle at the same time. So, okay. So the next thing we're going to do is I want to, um, I mean, again, this does look pretty, but the one thing that I want to do, one thing that I really love about alcohol ink work is that they use kind of like a floating gold and that floating gold, you can probably see it on this one, the floating gold that they use just looks so pretty in, um, you know, especially with resin and it's all shiny and shimmery. So I want to kind of mimic that look as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually um, add in our own gold lines to these pieces here and i'm going to be using this product here which is daniel baresi so it's db resin products and this is his metallic powder in diamond gold so i'm going to open it it's going to probably be messy but you can see here so it's like it is definitely a gold mica it just has like a, a it has like this what they call a diamond effect to it so i really like the look of it and I had some mixed up here. I hope it's still good. But so what I did, I might have to mix another batch if this one's kind of, yeah, it's been sitting for a while. So let's mix up a new batch just in case. So what I do is, I don't want to put it in this because there's too much. Well, let's do this. Okay, just need, a, we don't need a lot. We just need a little bit of the gloss varnish. So, um, yeah, so a bit of the gloss varnish and then we just need a little bit of this. It doesn't need a ton. So I usually just see what I can kind of put on from my brush and there we go. We just have to mix it really well. So, so we don't have any of that powdery look to it left at all. It's going to mix in with the gloss varnish. All right. And do I need a little bit more? Might need a little bit more. Um, the me there's, no <laughs> there's no measurement here. I'm just trying to make it so it's um, it's opaque. So it, like it's not see-through. The varnish... Um, we want, we want it to kind of, I think it's an even mix, like a, almost like a 50-50 mix. It might be slightly less for this because we want it to be thin. So, um, but like I said, we don't want the, we don't want it to be see-through. So again, um, this is again, this is just a scrap piece of card. So when I go like this, in a kind of a thin line or, yeah. So I want it to be opaque. 
I don't know if you can see that, but that's what I need it to do. And then we'll close that back up. And we need, like I said, we don't need a lot here because um, we're just doing some, some lines. Actually, this one's going to need quite a bit, but if we need more, we'll mix more. And then I'm using my super fine brush now. It's not as fine right now because I've been using it for mixing, but it's, I think it's called a double zero. So I'm using my super fine brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this and we're just the tiniest little bit, because again, I mean, if you want thicker lines, you can definitely put more on your brush. But for this, I want um, my lines can be a little bigger than what they have here, but I want it to kind of be similar. So I'm going to kind of follow a similar pattern to what they have here. like so mm -hmm. and the great thing with this is you don't need to have a really steady hand you just actually if you have a bit of a, a slight wiggle in your hand it's actually better and I'm going to extend it down farther I think than it actually went on the piece um, bring that closer so you guys can see it but so there we go so that gold that little touch of gold just really kind of brings it to life a little bit you know like it just adds that gold detailing that we're looking for um when we pour the resin on top it's going to bring all the colors up a lot it's going to make the colors pop and just kind of make them all shiny and glossy and saturated but the gold is just something that you know Printed paper can't match, um, obviously, like the shine shimmer of metallics. Um, there are foils and things in the printing process that can do it, but we don't have that here. So we're going to be using this. So there we go. So that one's done. So I'll go ahead and do the rest, and then I'll be back to show you what else we're going to do with these. So we're back and um, so I've had some camera difficulties <laughs> today and um, I'm probably going to have to redo the beginning so you're probably going to hear me talk about this at the beginning of this video and um, but I'm, I'm only letting you know now because now I just caught that there was issues with the basically the first portion of the video so in any case now um, my, um, I, my camera died part of the way through in the last time lapse. So I just went ahead and I uh, finished up the gold. So um, this is the green one that I was working on. And this is the, the gray black one. Now this one was a bit more complicated. There was a lot of gold on this one. So I just kind of, but there was also white areas. So I just kind of went along the white areas a bit to kind of just give it that bit of shine. Uh, you guys saw this one, but here it is again. And then this was the blue one. The blue and kind of an aqua green there. So yeah, so it kind of helps give us um, that bit of that shine that we're looking for with the uh, metallic pigment. So, okay. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we want to see if we could just add a little bit more embellishments to this because you know... This is a Leah Dia Designs video. <laughs> so we can't leave it just like this. We've got to see what else we can add to it. So um, this one I am going to leave just like this just because I think it's pretty the way it is. And this will kind of be our the one that's going to show us what it looks like if we didn't add anything else. So we'll use that as our comparison for that. So that will be the one that doesn't change. And then what I am going to do 
is I'm going to work on this blue one. So what I want to do with the blue one, and as our, hopefully our uh, gloss varnish is still good in here, is I want to add glitter, of course. So I have some Paradise Glitter, glitter that was just sent to me, and this one is called uh, Maldives. So it has blues and greens and teals and things in it. So I want to try it out with this and see how it looks. Nope, if I can open it without spilling a whole bunch. Oh, there's snowflakes in here. <laughs> okay, we're probably not going to use the snowflakes, but I'm just going to go ahead and add in some of this glitter in here. And what I want to do for this one is I want to, um, I just want to add in, I'm thinking to actually, well, actually I'm going to add it to one side because we have all this kind of gold happening here, which we're not going to be, um, we can't really mimic that look. So I want to cover it a little bit. Alright, so there we go. So we'll see how that looks once it's dry, but it'll be more sparkly right now. The gloss varnish is a bit opaque, so it kind of um, hides some of the sparkle because it needs to dry first, so it's still wet. And um, like I said, we just want to make sure it's not really covering any of our lines. We want to look like there's some separation there like so and we'll need to let that dry and the um in the time that i was able to do the rest of these the the gold lines are pretty much dry now so you don't have to worry too much about smudging those or anything so that one's done we're just uh doing our glitter thing here okay so that one we're gonna let dry and it's gonna need to dry you know because it's so thick it's gonna need to dry for a bunch of hours so and then for this one, the uh, gray one, we are going to be using a different product. So again, we're going to use some gloss varnish. I oh, just got my other cup for that. And we're just going to need a little tiny bit. And I'm going to be using um, this product here, which is um, almost done. <laughs> but it's the DB Resin Products. This is their Lux Silver Chips. And what I want to do is I want to add this little, I picked this section because it had this little area right here that almost looks like a geode. And I want to fill that with some of these silver chips and uh, just to see if we get that kind of a geode look. So let's try that out. Like they're actually like little glass chips. So oop, spill them everywhere. Oop, can you guys see that? So they're like actual glass. They're not glitter, they're actual glass pieces. So we're going to use some of those. So I'll show you how this one looks once it's dry. So before we add our top coat to it, we'll uh, look at it again because right now all you kind of see is the the gloss finish I'll show it to you but as you can see it's just really wet so you're not really seeing the effect right now so that's that and then for the last one we're gonna be um, adding I think we're gonna add so it goes kind of like this I'm gonna add some now <laughs> I'm not gonna say I'm probably not gonna say it right but let me try um, abalone shells i always say abalone but i've been corrected <laughs> a few times by people who know more than i do about these shells so i think it's abalone shells but i'm sorry if i'm still saying it wrong anyways i have um quite a bit of them but i tried to go through and select just the smaller ones that i'm going to need so um so i picked a few here and the same idea as the chips my hairs in here um, we're just going to pick a spot and I think I want to pick this spot here I think yeah and we're gonna do the same thing we're just gonna put down 
on a gloss varnish. So yeah, this is what it looks like with the shelves. Kind of cool. So yeah, so here we have our four options here. Our plain glitter, we have stones, crystals in this one, and we have shelves in this one. So we're going to let these dry. It's going to take a bunch of hours, especially for this one here. And even this one, it's going, because it, the gloss varnish is very thick, it's going to take probably four, five, six hours maybe. So I'll come back and check it. But once it's fully dry, then we'll be ready to add our, um, our resin top coat. Okay, so we're back and um, that hopefully you saw most of what was happening in the time lapse there. So you would have saw that I did add a top coat while the pieces were in the mold and then I removed them from the mold and I wanted to add a dome coat. Now I wanted to mention that because I think for pieces like this, if you're going to be, you know, kind of creating the same uh, technique, then um, on a piece of yours, if if you're using the paper to completely cover the entire surface of the um, the coaster or whatever piece you're making, you're going to want to do a dome coat. And the reason why I say that is because um, you can't really tell, but because we covered the whole entire piece, basically there's not really a lot. I mean, the gloss varnish is holding the paper to the base layer and then the resin is sitting on top, but there really isn't anything holding um, you know, besides the gloss varnish, holding the paper and the top in the top layer of resin to the base layer. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of seal around everything. And that's the reason why that I ended up doing a dome coat. So the dome coat will cover, obviously, we did a second coat over top of the original coat, and then we let it drip down the sides. And that just basically allowed us to have a seal all the way around. And that just holds the whole entire piece together. So even over time, um, you know, as resin, you know, expands and contracts with temperature and things like that there and, you know, and even the glue might, you know, the varnish might get old over time. Um, the whole this whole piece should stay together because the resin has sealed everything in. I just want to mention that clearly so you guys understand it because I don't want you guys doing things and having your pieces fall apart. So I took them out of the mold and then I flipped them over and you saw that I was actually applying um, white school glue. So was, I think it was the Elmer's brand. I can't remember, but, and, um, I added that on just because I normally use liquid latex, but I actually ran out and it takes a little while for it to get here when I order it. So I've seen other, um, creators use school glue and I thought, okay, you know what, let me try that and see how that works. And I mean, it works pretty well. You need to, you do need to put it on pretty thick in order for it to peel properly. And I probably should have covered the entire back because the one thing that I did notice is you can see um, I, this can come off, but it's difficult. Like it's not as easy and I'm trying to take it off. I mean, maybe I can just use um, like soapy water since glue generally can be washed off with water. So I probably will end up just doing that. But I find like it's just another step that I have to do. Whereas with the liquid latex, I don't have to do that. It just peels off super easy and clean. So if you do decide to use the glue, I'd probably recommend covering the entire back unless you're okay with going in and uh, washing it. So there you go. You can kind of see the bit of the glue. It, like I said, it's just stuck on there. It will come off. It just is going to take a little bit more 
effort. But I wanted to show that to you guys as well for those of you who want to use um, glue and if or if you're not finding the liquid latex. So there we go. So I did end up doing that. And then that's just to kind of prevent the drips. Um, it's going to capture all the drips um, when we do the top coat, which we did on here. And then we obviously had a drip down the sides. And then I was able to peel that off. Um, I don't think I have footage of me peeling it off, but that's pretty basic. So, so there. Um, so I did all of that. And uh, so now what we're going to do is I just want to add some gold edges to these pieces because as you can see, you can see the definite distinction in the sides here. And I just think it'll finish off the pieces really nicely if we can add some gold edges. So let me get uh, my materials together and we'll get that going. So in order to do edges, if you've seen some of my previous videos before, you'll know that I use my favorite product for at gold edges is uh, enamel paint. So this is a metallic gold and this is the brand Testers. There's a couple other brands that I use as well, but this is the main one that I really like. And it's mostly used for like uh, people who make model figures. So like cars and, you know, um, I don't know, action figures and things like that. Like it's meant for you know, really detailed metallic type painting. So um, I really like it because it uh, doesn't require sealing and it just has a beautiful finish when it's done. And um, it does take a little while to fully cure, just like resin. Like it probably takes a couple weeks up to 30 days for it to actually cure. And then it becomes pretty scratch resistant and it's awesome. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Before we go into the time lapse, I actually want to show you, because once I get the edges on, I'm not going to be able to, um, you know, get to hold them again for until they're dry and I'm running out of time for this video <laughs> so I wanted to show you quickly just how the um the paint looks like the um the paint we did on the inside so as you can see it just has that beautiful metallic flash in there like so and so that one I can show you guys this one as well and you can see how it looks really cool with the little stones in there it kind of gives it a little extra depth and interest because it almost it does kind of have that geode kind of look I mean it doesn't look exactly like a geode but it gives you you know a little bit of interest there and then the sparkle of course my absolute favorite with having lots of beautiful sparkle and this one's actually really pretty that new one that I got from paradise uh, glitter and uh so again, you can just see how the gold just flashes and shines. And of course, then our, um, how do I say it again? <laughs> abalone. Abalone. Yeah, I think that's right. So, and then we have that one as well. And the beautiful colors in the shells there too. Anyway, all right. Now we go to the time lapse. <laughs> So here we go, we're all done. And I just love the finished look of these with the gold edges and everything. It just looks so pretty. And um, yeah, like I said, it, I think, again, I mentioned earlier, I really think that um, we've accomplished, or at least I've what, what I had in mind. Um, maybe some of you don't agree with how this finish looked, uh, kind of looks, but to me, it gives the look I was hoping for. It looks like, um, that same kind of um, idea of alcohol inks. Of course, again, like I said, you're not going to see al alcohol inks normally um, have like a texture to them. You can actually see the layers. So obviously we're not getting that, but we are at least getting a bit of the metallic flash with the gold. And then we did add some other elements as well with the shells and things. So I think all that just kind of brings it to life. It has its own unique look. And um and like I said, it's easier. It's a kind of a different technique and a little bit easier for those of us who don't know um, or haven't tried alcohol inks, um, you know, creating art with them. So that 
you know, and I'm all about giving you guys options and trying new things and seeing what we can create. And, you know, I think these just turned out super cute. They could even be ornaments like for a tree or something. I just think they, you know, put a little hole in them and they'd be perfect, you know, if you have that kind of aesthetic. So anyway, um, before I go, I just want to mention, um, I know some of you are going to ask how I clean my brush and the same way that I showed earlier with the, um, the uh, isopropyl alcohol, same thing, just kind of I use a little bit of this and that will clean off that brush just fine. So, all right, huh. <laughs> this video, I mean, these are the littlest little pieces, but wow, this video was, you know, an adventure <laughs> to create. So um, anyways, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you like this technique and the idea. And I hope maybe that, um, you know, for those of you who are working with resin, if this is something you want to try, I'll definitely um, let me know in the comments if you something you'd like to try. And if you do end up trying it and you're on Instagram or even TikTok, tag me and uh, let me know um, what you think. And, uh, you know, show me what you can do. I do have a new hashtag for those of you who are new. It's Leah Dia Inspired Me. You can use that. And every so often I go through that hashtag and I'll pick a bunch of, um, of items that I um, showcase in my story. So, all right, I'm going to get going. <laughs> it's late. I have the video to edit now. And uh, I hope you guys really enjoy it. So, all right, guys, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And for those of you who uh, mentioned that you don't get the notifications, please make sure that you uh, click the little bell as well um, to get the notifications because I am hoping to do premieres um, a little bit more often. So with some of my different videos and um, if you have your notification bell on, then you'll get the notification hopefully um, as soon as I pull I you know, announce it or publish it that it's going to happen. So um, you won't miss it. All right. So I'm going to get going and I hope you guys again, once again, like this video and I will see you next time. Thanks so much guys. Take care. Bye.